So hello everyone, I'm Matt Holman. I'm the founder of Filament and uh, I could not be more excited and I know that seems like a, just a, a throwaway saying, but it's true. I could not be more excited about what we're about to share with you. It's something that we've been working on at Filament and thinking about for several years, planning to do it and then not planning to do it when the COVID hit and then suddenly planning to do it again. When we got enough arms twisting and uh, suggestions reminding us that we should make this happen. So it's called Thanksgiving. The simple part of it is we managed to cajole, otherwise convince 18 amazing for-profit entities, big companies, consultancies, technology companies, et cetera, to give the equivalent of effectively a day of their time to help 18 nonprofits. And so the way that it worked, which was so cool that I thought that we love so much is that Instead of just pairing them up, we worked with all the nonprofits to come up with a challenge, something that wasn't money related, although money goes a long way. You fear when you ask a nonprofit what they need, they almost always say more money. So instead of finding this money challenge for them, we came up with a how might we statement. For some, address things uh, like capacity, others around technology, even more around culture or innovation. And then we paired up these nonprofits with the for-profits in a draft. So we took about an hour. We had a really cool draft board. It wasn't quite NFL or NBA caliber, but we pulled this draft board together and each of the four profit companies got to pick the challenge. And it was only after all the challenges were chosen, did they get an opportunity to know who they were working with. So it was a try to purposely match organizations that had similar skill sets or challenges without it becoming a popularity contest. And I think I can say without reservation, that it could not have worked better. Everyone, many of the faces you see here were participants, whether it's volunteers, whether it's on the for-profit or the nonprofit side, and had just an amazing opportunity last week for most of them, still this week for some, to work on the challenges. I've got lots of questions because I'm just as curious about how the, participa the participation went outside of the groups that we were in. And just to be excited about how everything how everything shook out. We do know this, Thanksgiving is gonna happen again next year. We don't know how just yet. We don't know if it's gonna be virtual or in person, but what we're replacing now was going to be a, the first floor of Venture Cafe and everyone's gonna have a big trifold junior high science fair looking project cardboard where they talked about what they'd accomplished. Because we don't have that, some of that's gonna show up, compliments of several high school students on our website but we're gonna talk about how it went. Feel free to throw to begin with your questions in the chat. We'll get to those and then we'll start throwing it open to everyone to have some conversations. For those of you who are here, as far as our, our, our volunteers to ask to be on the panel, I'm gonna go through and give you a quick little uh, shout out, call your first name and then let you give yourself a quick introduction. Uh, just so everyone knows who the panelists are and then we'll jump into the conversation. Stephen Worth, I see your name first on the top of our list here that I'm working from. Introduce yourself and give me two or three words about Thanksgiving. Go ahead. Sure, yeah, hi everybody. My name's Stephen Worth. I'm, I've been with Purina now for about 16 years in different various design and innovation roles. I currently uh, lead our vision and strategy for our on-site retail innovation center that uh, we use to showcase design solutions and our category expertise to our retailer partners. So that's my current role, but obviously love moonlighting, doing stuff like this. C community outreach and connecting design to the community is obviously a personal passion of mine. So this was an easy, an easy, um, easy thing to jump on for me. I, I think a few words that come to my mind were just collaboration, optimism, impact, just fun. It was, a, it was just working with a great nonprofit. We had the pleasure of working with a company called Gateway Greening. Several of them are on the call along with some of my Purina team that um, we assembled. It was, uh, it was tremendously inspiring, but also super impactful. And we're super excited to talk about how, how, what that journey was like. So I picked Steven because I knew that he would not follow any of my instructions for the three or four words. Nah. Now that you've set the bar, I'm going to ask everyone to go underneath it when it comes to their quick description of Thanksgiving. You didn't, uh, say, Amy, you didn't say 47 words? 
That's exactly right. Amy from Hunter Engineering. I see you moved around here somewhere on the screen. There you are. Hi, I'm Amy. I'm an IT product owner and I help manage our IT projects for Hunter Engineering. We manufacture the best premium undercar service equipment and we do it in Missouri and we do it in Mississippi. So we're a manufacturing firm located in St. Louis. We had the joy of being partnered with Connected Learning and we were really excited to work with them. I think much of what we did focused mostly on listening. So we really listened to Connected Learning's story and there was a lot to learn there. And then we help them identify opportunities and kind of ways they could potentially improve. So that was most of our sessions. Excellent. Thank you very much, Amy. Eli, I saw you out here somewhere. Where'd you go? There you are. I am here, yes. Eli Gerson, I am the manager of innovation at Amron. And we had the pleasure of working with Wings of Hope. It was a fantastic learning experience for our whole team. And I think the best part was how engaged and excited everyone on our team was, everyone at Wings of Hope, and the excitement around creating positive impact uh, and being good corporate citizens and partners was so fantastic. Awesome, awesome. Here's a person that we got to work with. We wouldn't let Thanksgiving go by if we didn't get to pick a team to work with ourselves. Rosemary from Sickle Cell Association. Hi, I'm Rosemary Britz. I'm the founder and executive director of the Sickle Cell Association. We've been around for going on 10 years now. And the words that I would use to describe our sessions would be brainstorming, engagement, and uh, collaboration. Awesome. Thank you, Rosemary. Meredith, St. Louis Hi. Food Bank. There you are. I would say, if you can't see, <laughs> I'll be pixelated. <laughs> and I have a dog. <laughs> All right, so I'm the president and CEO of the St. Louis Area Food Bank. I've been there since February 2018. Words would be energized, overwhelmed at times, and innovative. So we had a great time with Commerce and all of our friends there. So thank you to everyone at Commerce who joined us. Appreciate it. Love it. Brett, uh, we've already heard a tad about your organization. Take it away, Brett. Hey, everyone. It's Brett Heinrich. I'm the president and CEO of Wings of Hope. We're a humanitarian organization that uses airplanes to reach people in the world's most remote wor parts of the world. Just a super experience with Amarin, our partners. The words are amazing, collaboration, definitely team. As I feel like I'm looking around here and seeing some of my old familiar friends, Morgan and Eli and all the rest. So I know that we're going to stay in touch and just do some great things together. It was awesome. I love it. I love it. And Thanksgiving wouldn't have happened without some extra volunteers. We've got Lucy and Nicole with us. Lucy, take it away. Yeah. Hi, I'm Lucy. And I chose to be a volunteer because, yeah, I thought it would be a cultural experience since I'm fairly new to St. Louis. And yeah, coming from a corporate environment at Nespresso, Switzerland, I thought it was quite eye-opening to see the real struggles and to look out of the box and help on the challenges that, uh, yeah, just help you to step sometimes out of uh, your comfort zone. So I had a lot of fun and I appreciate it to being part of this exciting, actually, first uh, project or journey, whatever it may be in the next years. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, last but not least, Nicole, I know you're here somewhere. Where'd you go? There you are. I'm right here. I'm here twice. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. So my name is Nicole Fibbs. I'm a student at Harris State University. 
I'm actually representing uh, our Anheuser-Busch uh, School of Business. I actually worked with a total of four team, two teams, but four companies. It was fantastic on my end. I love the fact that me being a student to be able to be a fly on the wall, uh, to see ideas bounce off and really looking at the core of the nonprofit and how everybody was uh, very respectful of uh, the advice and the suggestion. So I'm very happy to be here and this is going to be a great year and next year is going to be even better. I appreciate that, Nicole. One of the things that, that where Thanksgiving kind of came together was this challenge that when corporates and nonprofits engage, it's often around money in some way. It's having someone on a board, it's asking for donations, and to be able to find a mix of big and small companies and nonprofits to collaborate around a challenge they had was quite fun. But we also know that the challenge, having a day or three or four sessions virtually isn't enough to solve things from time to time. So one of the pieces of Thanksgiving that we're uh, really excited about for 2021 is that we're gonna be working at Filament with each of the nonprofits and doing an innovation day, right? A day where they actually get to bring some more people to the mix and think through not just the ideas, but the execution. And my expectation is, although it's not mandatory, that a significant number of the for-profit innovation teams that help them We'll continue to join them on that journey, but we'll be able to bring a couple of other stakeholders in the mix. What I'd love to do is just for a quick bit of time, because I know the approaches were different from every group, but Eli, if you don't mind, and then also Amy, I would love to hear from you what your approaches were when you connected with your teams and how you did some of this work. Eli, do you mind going first? Sure. I, the first thing that we did, which was fantastic, was we had a chance to go to see Wings of Hope in, in Chesterfield and able to do that safely. Don't worry, everyone. They have a huge hangar space and a, a place that was perfect to do that. But hearing, uh, meeting the staff, meeting Brett, hearing about the volunteers and seeing some of the artifacts that were brought back, et cetera, helped us be grounded in what the work was done and the impact. And then what we did was listen to their ask, which was about getting more volunteer engagement and starting to understand why that was important to them and what that meant. And then we had several ideation phases or stages where we had meetings to talk and bounce ideas. And quickly we turned some of their ideas, some of our new ideas, and kind of assigned those to each one of the five people on our team and just sprinted with our ideas and that's really how we took it. It was very fun. Love it. Amy, how did Hunter Engineering approach your challenge? I know you've still got maybe just a little bit more work to do, if I'm right. Is that yeah, correct? we do. Hunter, we actually had our expo right the week before Thanksgiving. So we were really pressed for time for Thanksgiving itself. So we were one of the teams that kind of spilled a little bit over into this week. But we, what we did was we had a couple of sessions, both with the founder of Connected Learning, so listening to his ideas and, and where he would like to see the, the organization grow into. And then also, since many of the members of Connected Learning's both board and leadership team are teachers. So we actually met a couple of times both with Chris and then we met on our own since many of the teachers couldn't make it during the day. And then last night we also all met off hours to, to really meet the team and then hear from them as well. Uh, oh, and it and looks I, like Chris I, McGee just uh, posted as well, so. It, he clearly is driving, but he <laughs> had time to text in the chat in Zoom. Uh, Chris, pull over to the side of the road and join or be safe. I don't think you could do both. Yeah, no, um, no texting and driving. Let, that's awesome. Listen, Let me just, the text works. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he is, a, he is a bit of a technology guy. I, I, we'll, we'll give him that. Stephen, yeah. I, we had a chance to see a lot more of your process play out, both in the artifacts you shared and knowing a little bit about how you work at Purina. 
tell us a little bit about how you engaged and if you're going to do the big reveal on what the solution was. Unfortunately, I can't do that because I know and Matt Schindler's on the call and I'm being respectful of the fact that he's got to take our solutions to his board to get alignment. So I'm not going to reveal anything now, but I'll, I'll definitely go through the process. Yeah. So yeah, Matt, uh, you can jump in anytime and uh, completely overrules. So just yep, put in the chat Matt, we'll pretend you your board I, didn't see it. I'll do whatever you want me to do, Matt. <laughs> so our challenge with Gateway Greening, they've been around since 1983 and they started out very simply putting planters around downtown and basically helping establish gardens around St. Louis. And over, the, over time, their mission has evolved and it really has grown to this whole idea of educating and empowering people to strengthen their own community through urban agriculture. And so it really became more about food and people than about gardening and, or, or even greening. So Gateway Greening had lost its, na its, <laughs> its, its name and they wanted to rebrand. So uh, the whole idea was how do, we, how do we create a better name that matches our mission? So the first thing we did was we met with Matt and his team and got to understand their mission, their values, where they're going. And then uh, what we did just based on the fact that we can't really meet in person. It's not easy to, to get in person to ideate nowadays. So we've actually established a pretty powerful virtual ideation process using tools like Mural, which is an online whiteboard website where you can go and connect and collaborate as you would in front of a normal whiteboard with post-its and things like that. So we actually ran a three-hour session with a cross-functional team from Purina. We had marketers, we had communication strategists, we had designers um, from Purina. And then on their side, they brought not only their team from Gateway Greening, but some of their volunteers and the people that are really living this mission in the community every day. It was extremely impactful. And we learned so much through that experience, just based on building, just building empathy for the, the real people that are out there doing this day to day. And it helped us really galvanize a new set of principles that we then ideated on and basically aligned on three names that then my, my counterpart on the call, her name's, her name's Lori, she's in PR. She, uh, she actually reached out to a uh, freelance graphic designer that we work with. And so we got some, some work from him to actually bring them to life through new brand identities. I, we just saw those this week. Uh, I just sent them to the Purina team. Matt Schindler and his team have not seen them. We're revealing to them on Monday. They are amazing. Uh, they're going to have a hard time, I think, making a decision. But uh, the process was super collaborative. It was rooted in design thinking principles, understanding your user, understanding their mission. And we, then we used virtual ideation technology uh, to basically get to a, a set of solutions. So super powerful, very jazzed up. I, I love that. I'll tell you one thing that we asked, and it was a big ask, not just of the for-profits to put together a team, but the nonprofit teams were, uh, it was a significant undertaking for them. Rosemary, I'm going to come to you on this in a minute. We asked, you know, every nonprofit brought an executive level person, almost all an executive director. We then asked for at least one board member, one of their staff members, and then ideally someone they serve, right? A constituent, a client, however they would frame it. We were fortunate enough to work with Rosemary and the Sickle Cell Association and being able to bring people into our brainstorming who have sickle cell, who are suffering it, who've uh, lost children to it, who've been engaged with the disease, not just as an advocate, but as someone who's felt it and lived it was unbelievably powerful for us. And uh, I'd love for you, Rosemary, if you don't mind to share a little bit, because we were lucky enough to have a handful of different people throughout the three sessions we did. Tell a little bit about their experience and, uh, and, and, how they felt coming into the mix, not knowing much about Thanksgiving. Yeah, so all the feedback that I've gotten from my team has been outstanding. They really enjoyed the experience and being able to talk with your team, being that you didn't know really what sickle cell was or how, the depths of it. And so having that opportunity to share with you all and then to get your feedback from just, I guess, for lack of a better word, a, a completely clueless position. Oh, that's that. totally true. That's accurate. Mm -hmm. And and so it, it just gave us a, a different flair and different feel for the feedback that we received. So everyone enjoyed it. 
our one patient that was there, she was really excited to have the team to just pour into our organization and realizing that you all had our best interest at heart. Oh, thank you very much. Chris McGee, by the way, one of the challenges that we talked with Rosemary and her team was how to bring both the challenges and potential responses to sickle cell to teachers, especially among the elementary level. You expect a phone call sometime soon because we're going to lean on you a bit to think a bit creatively about that with us because that's one of the things we're going to keep working on with Rosemary and her team. I'd love to actually open the floor if I can, to anyone who is a participant, first of all, because we have about probably 10 more at least participants in Thanksgiving who weren't officially panelists for us, to share an insight, an aha, an epiphany, and then also to open it up to any questions. We've got lots of cool stuff we'll continue to share on the thanksgiving.org website, but this is fresh off the presses. We literally just walked away from most of these groups at the end of last week and some are still going. Anyone have anything they'd like to add into the mix about how things went, or reactions, or potentially even wins or challenges? This is where I'm going to start calling on people if someone doesn't step up to volunteer. Uh, Dan, yeah, I volunteer? Go, well, go ahead. Say, well, say that again, Don. I hate to intrude. I, I want Tim to talk. I'll have plenty of time. Go ahead, Tim. Well, oh, we're coming to you, Don. Don't worry about that. It's, it's on its way. <laughs> Tim, go ahead, please. Thanks. Tim Long, Director of Operations with Wings of Hope. It was an uh, amazing experience. Collaboration, the word's been used a lot, but that's exactly what it is. And one of the things I took away from this is this untapped potential for partnership. And one of the things with the Ameren team that we discussed was we have an enormous volunteer group at Wings of Hope. And a lot of them have very specialized skill sets uh, that they brought from 40 years in industry. And we're getting to a point where we really need to do some targeted recruiting now to find some younger people that can come in and fill some specific roles. And the, the group from Ameren was awesome. They got it right off the bat and just jumped right in. And I'm excited to see what that brings. That's fantastic. Sheila, you had a hand raised. Take it away. Sheila, if you're taking it away, we can't hear you. <laughs> okay. There you are. I'm Sheila Suderwalla. I'm the executive director of Artists First. We're a nonprofit art studio that works with veterans, individuals with disabilities, kids, and our communities, elders, and we use art. And with this year has been obviously very challenging. And I think the biggest thing for us <clears throat> out of this was the staff is so energized and so grateful to know that there's people in the community that care and actually will take the time and understand and collaborate and not obviously where our problem is being solved our challenge is being worked on which is great to have that outside perspective but the most important thing on a human level is that encouragement that relighting that spark after this challenging time Wow, thank you, Sheila. That's uh, that's hard to talk after that. Thank you, Tracy and Tracy Welp. I see you down in the corner, at least the corner of my screen. How did it go with your team? Talk a little bit about uh, how things went. We had spent probably a, about an hour and a half together. So we had one of our creatives, one of our owners, and myself, and I think really spent a lot of time understanding what's all what's already been tried because we didn't want to walk in assuming we knew anything and so i don't know if sheila would agree but i think it was through just like questions and answers and exploring and looking at their strategic plan and understanding why they were making certain decisions why they were having new conversations what it understanding what their moonshot was, but really understanding that this challenge was how can we tell stories of our artists and help them sell their work and really understanding what that being paid for your work, what it means for your independence, 
your dignity, your worth, as well as the lifeblood of the nonprofit organization. It was really very clear to us that if we could help them in the short term during this holiday season, when people do want to give gifts that make an impact, helping them understand what that impact is, and then over the long term, really helping the virtual experience be a place where people really understand that they can purchase and that it brings tremendous value to everybody and makes an impact and then some messaging. So those are the areas we're focused in. And so those are right up our alley. And we're fortunate to have some resources available to us that we think we're going to try to help with this holiday season, knowing how tough it's been for Sheila and her team because of the restrictions on COVID restrictions right. and what that's meant to everyone. Tracy's with Cannonball. Thank you. I didn't you and just so everyone knows who's doing the work. Thank you for that. Sheila, if you did not put the URL for your organization in the chat so we can all buy art from you, it yes. is a <laughs> throw that in there now. Uh, I see two more hands raised. Joseph Gregory, do you mind uh, jumping in first and then back to you, Nicole? Hey, not at all. It sounds like everybody is like making awesome work. So that's very exciting to hear. I'm with St. Patrick's Center, and we've partnered with Integrity, and shout out to Aaron and his team there. They are doing tremendous work, like both with the project and being patient with us. The, the project is involving lots and lots of moving parts, like it sounds like a lot of these projects are. So we're going to be one of the projects that bleeds over into another week. But yeah, I just wanted to use this as a class to very neat and that integrity St. Patrick's is very appreciative of and we're excited to keep working with them. That's fantastic. Aaron, anything to add to that before we go to Nicole? Yeah, absolutely. Feelings definitely mutual. It's been great to learn more about uh, St. Patrick's Center and just really the most interesting part for me was just learning about their approach to addressing homelessness in the community. It's just been great to see the holistic approach and the human approach and just really talking with them and trying to understand more of, of that is what this is all about to me helping us understand just as as much as we're trying to help them understand maybe a technical problem or something like that so it's been a great great uh, transfer of knowledge there there's something about that i think is i don't want to say it was unexpected but it's certainly the extent of it was surprising around thanksgiving is that how much value transferred in both directions Absolutely. Right? It yeah. wasn't about being the savior as a for-profit and coming in and doing something. There was so much learning and empathy that went both ways. One of the real benefits I know for us, and I'm guessing for nearly everyone else who participated, that was something that was true. Nicole, you've had your hand up. I'm not forgetting you. Take it away. You stole my thunder. That's what exactly I was going to say. I saw how the not-for-profits were really focused on the short term. Let me be able to serve my community in this specific way so that I can create change and support whatever service it was. I did work with Cortex and Emerson and Transparent and Limitless. And to see how, how much passion each person had on both sides of the spectrum, how much passion they had to bring as many resources as they could to uh, actually solve their challenge, I can say that's phenomenal. On top of that, I can, I, one thing on the long run, the non for profit well, the for-profits actually said, hey, look, you're doing something exceptional work, but this is how we can make it easier. You're doing double the work. Let's make this simple. Let's allocate responsibilities. And then you have more time. Let's look at the verbiage on who's being called this. And let's really utilize the people that can be your best advocate, which are your volunteers. So like I said, I'm grateful to be a fly on the I, I'm guessing you were more than a fly on the wall. You had to be a participant. I think I, I, you have too many ideas not to, not to share, at least a bit, Nicole. That's awesome. Anyone else on, anyone else? I see, I see uh, some folks from Emerson, from Spire, from LFC. I see a handful of our other participants. Anyone else want to share an experience or 
on Insight before we open it up to uh, Q&A. And also I see in the chat, we can arrange curbside pickup from artists first. That's amazing. Good sales job, Tracy. Anyone else want to jump in and share an experience, a question, a comment? Oh, Mary, I see a hand up in the corner. So this is new with Zoom for me. The hands actually moved in the very top left. I saw you and then you jumped over to my left hand oh. side. Take it away, Mary. So I'm with the St. Louis Area Food Bank and we got to work with one of our existing partners, coincidentally, Commerce Bank. So it was a great experience. A little bit different than some of you, our agency has been on overdrive at, during the COVID response time. So extra long hours, extra demand, extra need, all of these things. And so the topic that we address is something that I think we were all interested in, in working on, engaging with people in a different way virtually, but we just didn't have time to breathe and think about it because the response was so critical and the resource, the need for resource was so urgent that we've been spinning on our wheels really since March. And it, it forced us to block out the time and to think about things a little differently. And how, the how might we conversation was really important. And I love the different perspective from our partner. So it was a really good opportunity. I'm grateful for it. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to share before I call on either Dan or Mike? Dan smiled first, Mike smiled second. Dan, you're up. Sure, yeah, this is Dan Susi. I'm at Spire, and we had the pleasure of working with uh, Lutheran Family and Children Services. And I think what I would share the most is uh, I was amazed, and I'll just speak from my team's uh, perspective on this. I was blown away with just the enthusiasm and the excitement that the whole Spire team brought to this, not that, and no offense to my friends at Ameren either, but not that working in the utility space isn't uh, that Not that the two of you compete in day, any way, but just to be they, were, they were just, I was getting so much proactive uh, response from them. People were from all over the organization. It was wonderful. So we, we in corporate development had a, a lot of buy-in and, and a lot of people really wanting to be part of the team, but we expanded uh, to the communications team, the marketing team, and they were ready to jump in, jumped in on calls, helped with everything, shared lots of documents and, and things that, that we thought would be useful for this team. That was, it was a lot of fun for us. And I, I love seeing the, uh, the Spire team come together. Yep. I love it. I see Janice and Mike from LFCS. Uh, either of you jump in and, uh, and either call Dan out and say you didn't experience any of that or double down and say how amazing it was. I learned more about beautiful natural gas than I ever thought. <laughs> it's clean burning. It's got more low carbon emissions, man. They really educated us on uh, clean burning and, and we're big Spire fans. I see more Spire uh, vehicles on the road now that I've dealt with them. Uh, it was a fantastic experience. I think Janice can share you with that. And we've already taken some of the things that we've learned from Spire in the process and coupled that with some things that so we got the chance to work with Filament about two years ago. And we took the uh, Spire, some of the, they have a, something called the Champions Program, which is really an internal program designed to motivate their staff to go out and, and share the great news about natural gas and what Spire is doing. And we basically took a lot of the elements already and started putting together and integrated some of the things we learned with filament. In, theirs is called the Champions Program. Ours is going to be called Be Empowered. And one of the things that Dan and his team mentioned is always focusing everything you do back on your mission. And that's one of our things from our mission statement. So we're really excited. We're big Spire fans. It was a good. It was a good experience. It sounds like they got their money's worth just in that commercial all by itself. That hey, was incredible, Mike. We we have the same colors too. <laughs> I'm I'm curious. I one last question I'll throw out to the group is I, there might be some Q and A. So at least I hope so. Is it as we think about and this is maybe that net promoter score version of the question, right? By show of hands, those who participated, who wants to do it again next year? Oh, take a, take a screenshot of that, Don. That is, oh my God, so amazing. 
So we have plans, and the fact that, that uh, the filament team all raised their hand is good news for me, thank goodness. We have plans next year to do it again. We think that there's a handful of things with, with Thanksgiving that if we're in person, again, these Thanksgiving becomes a full day, right? That was the original intent. Be a full day on campus at the nonprofit or the for-profit, a chance to actually make this an innovation day, a bit more of a celebration when we're all together Again, the celebration, we we're going to be on the first floor of the Venture Cafe over at CIC. And the other piece about this is that we think this is a national, potentially a national opportunity. Uh, to see something where it is a simple commitment, it feels so good for people to engage. It has meaningful short-term and longer-term benefits. And it doesn't feel like another volunteer opportunity or picking up trash or planting flowers or those sorts of things, even though they're valuable. To be able to put your smartest people to think about something together always feels like the connection will be deeper and hopefully longer lasting. I want to say one last thing before we ask questions. And uh, there's a person, she just disappeared off of my screen, but only because everyone's moving around here as people raise their hand. But Don Buckley on the filament team was a person who not only was the arm twister for Todd and I to make sure that we get this done, but she was also the one who made it work. She was sitting there, I don't know how many hundreds of emails, I don't know how many I got copied on, and I know it was a fraction of the number that she sent. The amount of cajoling, the amount of coordination that she did, just a, a round of applause for Dawn. Here. And Dawn, if you're still here somewhere, because again, you've disappeared from my screen, are you around? Did you get, are you here? Did you disappear on my other? Screener, do we say all that and you weren't, you were gone? Dawn? Dawn? Are you kidding me? I'm gonna have to compliment her again. I know we're recording this, so at least we'll, at least, hopefully her internet- You just uh, sent a message saying she lost power. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, so that may have been strategic on her part, just so she can hear all those compliments again. She knew that I was gonna set her up. So Dawn had a chance to participate both on the filament team but also a nonprofit that she's deeply involved with Transparent was a, a participant on the nonprofit side. So she among just about none of, no one else really got a chance to uh, dive in deep on both sides. And so this is recording. I will make sure that I share this with her in her annual review that will likely happen whenever COVID's over face to face. But I want to throw this open to questions. This is so cool. I've, I've got a gigantic grin on my face just hearing this. Anyone have any questions about the mechanics of how it worked or for any of the panelists that have joined some specific questions about them? Hey, Matt, this is a question for you, man. How do we get this more widespread? How do we get this communicated more widespread? I put it in the chat, but this is the type of stuff that is inspiring to everybody to hear that this is happening, not only in our local community, but it's making an impact. Like we need more good news now more than ever. Like how do we blast this out to every news outlet in the local community to start building kind of a groundswell of awareness for this thing. So we'll start by pushing, uh, twisting Gilberto's arm, who's up in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, he does, uh, among other things, PR for Cortex, uh, which has been an amazing partner, by the way. We'd be remiss to not thank them deeply for their participation. Sam Fiorello, their new CEO, along with Maxine Clark from the Del Mar Divine, were the two chief arm twisters to actually resuscitate this from something we were gonna push until next year. But the, the short answer is tell people about it, right? It, like from a corporate PR standpoint, you have people who tell your stories all the time. They get paid, they might not tell them as well as Mike just told Spire's story, but they tell these stories all the time. Push this in front of them. We've got the resources, we've got all the pictures, we've got the website, we've got all of the tools, we have all of the stuff we can help tell that story better. But to tell the story, for those of you on the nonprofit side, tell your board members at your next board, at your next board meeting, virtual or otherwise, tell them how it felt, tell them what happened, tell them to share more. Because next year, if we don't have 50 teams participating from St. Louis alone, I'll count this as a failure because it's too good not to have that big, but tell the story. And as we jump into the new year, we're gonna do our best. We're a small company, uh, like a handful of other folks here but tell that story. I know Lori, I know you just texted to her, Stephen. We've got, uh, we got 40, we got 40 folks on the phone tomorrow. Maybe we'll just tell all these people at this uh, workshop we're doing tomorrow. 
but tell the story. And that would be really meaningful to us and we can help you in multiple ways to tell it better. I would love some questions. I'm, I'm tired of talking. Send some, uh, send some questions to them in the chat, raise your hand or just jump right in. Uh, hey, Matt, hey Matt, I'll jump in. This is Bob Perfect, from Bob. Connected Learning. I don't know if Filament would be willing, but even if you created text that had all of our names on it, said what Thanksgiving was, and sent it and said, hey, slap your logo on the top of this and send it to these four media people. If you gave us a task, I have a feeling that 50 organizations would say, we will take your email, put it on something and send it to these four email addresses. So I know you have to make it that simple, but you may have to make it that simple. That's a great idea, Bob. And it's something we can totally do. Those of you who participated, not surprisingly have an email from Dawn in your inbox that ask you for your quotes. So we're collecting those right now. I see Dawn is back. Dawn, I'm gonna say it again because it's worth me saying it again. You got an amazing compliment from everybody. A round of applause, which you're about to get again for all of your work and efforts and insight and motivation and participation and uh, everything else I said nice about you. You're gonna have to listen to the recording because I'm too embarrassed to say it a second time. But thank you, thank you, thank you, Dawn. Also, Todd, on our team, those of you who work with Filament, know that the only reason you come back is because Todd and Dawn are amazing. Todd's the guy who draws all the pictures. We actually created images for each of the challenges. The folks who were with us with Sickle Cell were lucky enough to see some of Todd's images drawn in real time for our sessions. They're up on the website now. And so thanks to Todd as well. Any other questions? I know it's happy hour time for some. It's Venture Cafe. We've got 18 minutes before Venture Cafe says it's time to move on. We can talk amongst ourselves or share some more, or we can say, we'll call it an afternoon. Quick question, Matt. Yep. So as someone who enjoyed participating in this process with Amron, I was, I am a board member with Wings of Hope and had a great process with them through a lot of innovation and brainstorming. So I'm curious if we are telling our friends who own small businesses or other nonprofits we work with, this was a really transformative opportunity. You should look into getting involved next year. I know it's very early, but what do you think will be the best way that a company that wants to make sure that they get on the radar for this can either sign up or doesn't miss a deadline and all of a sudden they miss a chance? Yeah, it's a great question, Adam. So the website will be after the holidays will be refreshed for next year. This has been a moving target and uh, building the airplane, no offense, Wings of Hope, as we already jumped off the cliff with only a handful of parts. So we'll be a lot more intentional about it next year. All of you are on the list. If you participated, uh, your team leads will get that information. We'll tweet it out. We'll push it out. So everyone has a chance to come back again. And I will say this, this is one thing that we were hoping for, but we were only fingers crossed that it was going to work, is that we have to build supply and demand at the same time in Thanksgiving, right? You need enough for-profits to invite non-profits. You need enough non-profits to handle the for-profits. And it turned out that we had the exact right number of both this year, which was you know, gratitude and I think the universe telling us something. But next year, the non-profits, we hope it's competitive and we still get to say yes because everyone's in. One of our challenges, now that we know what it is, uh, because we didn't even know what it was this year, we thought we knew what it was, is to be able to say to someone, hey, talk to Adam, talk to Dan, talk to Eli, if you're on the for-profit side, and see what it is. Talk to Brett, talk to Rosemary, and so on and so forth for the nonprofit. So we have those testimonials, we have the how to work. And one thing Dawn has been doing, beyond emailing and juggling and, and spinning a thousand plates, is we're trying to keep our best practices and lessons learned Bible as well, so we make it a lot easier for everyone next year. Matt, you even used my word. I call it my Bible. That's right. I call it my Bible. I'm trying to capture everything, and I know so many of you saw my stumbles, and I hope it wasn't glaring, but as far as getting people involved, email me. If you don't get the form for interest, if they don't have the link to fill out the form that they're interested in Thanksgiving, just give them my, my email, my phone number. I don't care. They can call me at 2 a.m. The more people I get on board with this initiative, uh, it's life-giving to me. 
Just don't this call is, her at 8 a.m. 2 a.m. is the sweet spot. <laughs> it is the sweeter spot. Some of my emails have gone up. <laughs> it's true. But yes. I, Dawn, I, I, you dropped off right before I was going to ask you the question. I'm, it's okay. Yeah. You had the opportunity to be on both yeah. teams and certainly in the background. Uh, I think I, I can't think of a better way to close this out than to you for you to share a bit about the experience on both sides as well as mm. how it connected you with purpose here in St. Louis. Yeah, I, I would say my biggest takeaway, I'm more impassioned for work than I've been in, been for a long time. But I would say my biggest takeaway is the networking possibility because it is on such a human level. Everybody's authentically engaged and interested and invested and they want to connect with people and they want to participate because how many times do people say I really have this energy to volunteer I don't know where to put it where can I put this good energy and this good work and my skill sets where can I where can those land so for that to have a vehicle and play out in such a meaningful way it's really fantastic and a lot of the things I'll hear or learn about some of the approaches from one of the team's strategy, like their outcomes. I'll learn about that and I'll be thinking of this other organization be like, oh shoot, they need to hear about this idea. In the background, I'm emailing so-and-so and emailing saying, you might wanna look at this, what about this? And my wheels, you guys are making me OCD and obsessive because I can't let it go, but it's such good stuff. And I want everybody to network and really benefit and leverage each other's wisdom. And Eli, I know you could speak to this as far as the transfer of some best practices or how this can really trickle across so many different paths and professional capabilities and networks. I don't know. Can you speak to that a little bit, Eli? That was really, I've had these same thoughts and I would love yeah, to hear I mean, that. One of the really interesting things that came out of ours, so on, on our team, Morgan Guile looked a lot at trying to link uh, and Katrina Reese to the team members uh, to our corporate giving and to efforts that we do around employee resource groups and lunch and learns. And we quickly turned and tried to figure out how would that work for other companies or how would that be a, a, a way to engage. Patrick Brown looked at the Give STL or STL Day as an opportunity. And I reached out to some people on this call and others to see if our proposals that work for Amron to engage with us for volunteers would work similarly at other companies. So, still early in hearing back, uh, some I think there's great opportunities and some we're learning that there will have to be different approaches. But the neat thing was that everyone's responding enthusiastically and encouragingly. Uh, so a neat follow-up might be from this group or otherwise might be how do we get better engagement and collaborations and how do you find the right person at organizations to reach out to and how could an effort like this help spur that and get that trickle down of, of benefits from this day and keep the momentum going it's really I, exciting it, to me it's a great question and it's it's the recommendation spire would not be involved eli had you not had you not copied the cc and made me talk to them the, if we're doing it they better do it so how we pull that through and then, then dance it they're doing one team maybe we do two so we'll have to think about how yeah, an organization might be able to bring multiple teams to the mix next year as well. So I, I can't wait. We got a couple of questions. I promise I'll come to them. But I saw from Lori Westoff from Purina. She said, I've got some breaking news in all caps. Breaking uh, news. Like red meat in front of a dog when I see that, Lori. What's the big news? So, looks, I can't take a challenge from Stephen questioning my PR ability. All right. That's what I do for a living. So, well, my Rolodex in St. Louis is not as deep as I would like it to be, but I have a very good friend at Burn PR who has a deeper Rolodex than I do, and we're going to pay for them to help tell the story. Oh, that's awesome. And next week is Thanksgiving. It's a Thanksgiving story. 
we'll get it out there, guys. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Or should I say thank you, thank you, thank you. Here is my, so two other questions before we close. One, can you describe how the students will do their work? Brett, that's a great question. We are, they're in process right now. The original goal was how cool would it be to have students as flies on the wall in the, some of these sessions. That model didn't work particularly well with COVID and them not knowing if they're going to be in person or not. So what we've done is we've asked each of the teams to give a synthesis or a summary and the students, mostly high school, are going to prepare uh, and I want some TikTok videos. Like I really want to get, I want to understand what this TikTok thing is all about, but they're going to do some quick little videos or visual presentations of some sort that will go on the blog that we'll share out with you once they're done. So that's in process. That was one of our lessons learned that we'll figure it out a little bit better next year, just from a timing standpoint, because we can ask and, uh, and have them teed up a little bit sooner, but uh, we're excited about that, what they're going to do. The other question was, lessons learned about the processes that were not virtual related. I think for us, and Don, I'll tee this up to you both to close this out here, but the, the, one of the process pieces is just, I know that I, and I think we all underestimated the amount of plates spinning as we got closer to the event. And so all of a sudden it went from we're in to now all of a sudden do this, schedule, et cetera. So we'll build most likely a portal next year that will be a little bit easier for everyone to engage with and keep out of your inboxes a bit more and also share a bit more of best practices. We didn't want to be too prescriptive on how to do this. So we did the last minute threw together a workshop using our stuff. We had a handful of people who used it. So it wasn't about saying, here's how you have to do it. But to now to bring a few more folks to the mix, Amarin and Purina and Disparity and our influence and others, Cannonball, to say, how would you approach this? So now there's a library of best practices that might work well. That's, I think, one of the lessons learned. It will look a lot better next year, but as a beta pilot, as we say, forgive the language, the shitty first draft, this one felt pretty good. Any other questions before we close? Don, anything you want to add to the mix of lessons learned or the big thank you to bring us home you don't want to open the floodgates of lessons learned because right. geez that's why please. i'm asking you with only seven minutes left <laughs> right matt knows me he'll be muting me any minute you guys just watch but oh, anybody no, don't tempt me. <laughs> anyone anyone who participated please give me your candid feedback really i can take it and thank you so much for rolling with all the bumps and you know everything and being flexible with the process because it was a build the ship as we go and I really appreciate everybody's just flexibility and patience with everything the processes talk about a lot of plate spinning it, it was immense but it was so invigorating for me I loved it so much for everybody's not just to say myself but any feedback you get or you have please share it with me I really want to hear it or us I want to hear it and apply everything because we want to hit the ground running in 2021 if it can be this good and this inspiring in 2020 oh my god 2021 I don't even know I don't even know forget about it hey, about it. hey Matt one last thing for me you and I go way back and I remember when you had a nugget of an idea that this was <laughs> it was like a name and a general concept and I remember you calling me and saying hey I got this random idea to run by you and I just want to say it's it's amazing what you've built here and I will speak on behalf of the Purina team it was not hard to get people to be interested in this I, I, the people that I recruited I could have recruited three times the team and everyone would have said yes and it just goes to show the power of what you're building and what this your team and what this community is willing to rally around and you should just feel really proud because it's amazing. So kudos to you as being the, the architect of this. Oh, thank yes. you. Yes, thank I'm you. so appreciative. Yes. And we'll have time, Stephen. We'll spread that word. I'm almost nervous what's about to come, but yeah, we're this embracing is, it. This is you guys are on the precipice of something big.